okay so so last time we use the lag to lag uh, four and lag five so uh, so the total outcome is here you can see when i use the lag to suppose the first one when i use the lag to our p value was 11.40% and it is our null hypothesis that LR does not cause uh, consumption but we cannot reject it because the p-value is more than 5%. Even I am giving the second example, suppose I choose this one, suppose uh, uh, here uh, we have taken 4 lakhs and but we cannot and what is our null hypothesis lr does not cause consumption can i reject the answer is no because p value is more than five percent here the p value is 6.07 percent so it is more than five percent so we cannot reject null hypothesis but when i am here you can see from here when i choose five black and and when i choose five black the p value become 4.15 percent which is which is less than five percent meaning that we can reject our null hypothesis what is the null hypothesis LR does not cause consumption. So we can reject null hypothesis and accept alternative hypothesis. What is our alternative hypothesis? Our alternative hypothesis is that LR causes consumption. LR causes consumption. That is our alternative hypothesis. So now you can see from here, uh, so when I change the lag, you see when I take it 5, then you can see that we can reject null hypothesis. So lag is a very important factor in Granger causality models. Okay, then now, then, then question comes up, how many lags we should choose, we should use? So how many lags uh, should be perfect, should be, should be all right for Granger causality test, okay, to, to, to know how many lag or lag selection, we can use the Akaika and Schwartz information criteria to detect the optimum uh, number of lags that should be used in a particular models and this one this one we can check later maybe uh, in future uh, I shall be uh, uploading videos where I shall tell how many lags we should choose or what is the optimal lag numbers for a particular models thank you very much for being with me